In this video, I will show you how to create your first Spring Boot application using Eclipse IDE. So first, let's download and install Eclipse. So we can type Eclipse IDE. Let's go to the first link at eclipse.org. Then here, let's click on download. So we can download the installer, but I prefer to install the IDE using the zip file. So I will click on download packages. Then here we need to download and install Eclipse IDE for enterprise Java and web developer. So because I have Windows, let's click on this link. Then download. Then we need to save this zip file, but in my case I already downloaded it, so I will cancel this download. So this is the zip file that I have downloaded, and we need to extract it. So we can make a right click, then zip, then extract files. I will extract it on the folder of the user of this computer. So let's delete all of this part from the path, then OK. So now the file is extracted correctly. Let's go to the folder where it has been extracted. So we can click on documents. Then let's open any folder. So let's open this folder, for example. Then let's put the cursor here. And let's delete the last two folders from the path. So this is the folder of Eclipse. So we can rename it. And here we have the file that allows us to run the IDE. We can create a shortcut of this file on the desktop. So we can make a right click, then send to, then desktop. So we can use this shortcut to start the IDE. And here we need to select a folder as a workspace. We can accept this default folder. Let's check this box, then launch. So now Eclipse is installed correctly. Let's close the welcome page. Then let's create a new Spring Boot project. So let's go to the browser. And you can use Spring Initializer. So here let's type Spring Initializer. Let's go to the first link at start.spring.io. So we will create a project using Maven. So here let's select Maven. We will use the Java language. Let's select the latest stable version of Spring Boot. Then here let's provide the group ID, which is the name of the owner of the application. Then let's provide the name of the application. So here we can write first app, for example. Then let's add the dependencies to this application. So first we need Spring Web. This dependency allows us to create web applications, RESTful applications, and Spring MVC applications. It has an embedded server, so we don't need to install any additional server. Then we need ThymeLeaf. Let's select this dependency. Then let's download the application, so we can click on Generate. Let's save the file. I will save it on the desktop. Then let's extract it. So I will extract it in the Documents folder. So this is Documents. Then in Documents I already created a folder called Spring projects, so I will select this folder, then OK. Then let's open the project using Eclipse. So here we can click on File, then Open Projects from File System. So let's select Documents, then Spring projects, then First App, then Finish. So this is our application, let's expand it. 
but it is not ready yet because Maven is downloading the required files so we have to wait a few seconds and now the project is ready so let's expand this folder and here we have this package that contains this file which is the main java class so this file contains the main method that allows us to run the application so we can make a right click then run as then java application so now the application is running correctly And here we can see that it is available at this poor number. So let's go to the browser. Then here, let's type localhost, then colon, then the poor number, which is 8080. But here we have this error, because we did not create a controller that will respond to this route. We can stop the application using this button. Then let's create the first controller. So we can make a right click on this package, then new, then class. And let's create the controller and the controllers package. So here in the package, just here, let's add dot controllers. So this package will be created. Now let's provide a name to the controller. We can call it home controller. Then finish. Then let's annotate this class with the controller annotation. Let's import this annotation, so we can click here. Then import controller. Then let's create a method in this controller that will respond to the root URL. So we can call the method show home page, and it returns a string, which is the name of the file that will be served and it will be accessible using the HTTP GET method. So let's import this annotation. Then let's create this file. So we need to create it in the Resources folder, in the Templates folder. So here let's make a right click, then New, then File. And let's call it home.html. Then here, let's write some HTML code. So we can use Bootstrap, for example. So to use Bootstrap, let's go to the browser. And here, let's type Bootstrap. Let's go to the first link. Then Docs. And let's copy this source code that includes Bootstrap CSS and JavaScript from the CDN. Let's paste it here. Let's save the different files so we can use this button. Then let's run the application. So now the application is running correctly. So let's refresh this page. And here we can see that we have this message. Now I will show you how to pass some data from the controller to the page. So first we need to add a parameter to this method that allows us to pass some data to the page. So we need to add a parameter of type model. Now let's import this class. And let's add some data to this model. So we can call model.addAttribute. Then here we have the name of the parameter and then we have the value. So here we added two parameters to the model. We added the title and about. And these are the values. Now let's update the home page to display the values of these two parameters. So after the h1 element, let's add an h2 element, for example. Then let's add a time leaf attribute that allows us to display the value of the title. So just here in the open tag, we can add th colon then text and it is equal to the value of the title attribute that we defined just here. Now let's add a paragraph to display the value of this attribute.
So we can add this time leaf attribute and this is the name of the variable. But here we can see that we have some warnings. This is because the time leaf attributes that we are using are not recognized by the editor. To fix this, we can just here in the HTML tag, we can add an attribute. So here we can see that we don't have the warnings anymore. Of course, this is optional and we can delete it, but we can add it to get rid of the warnings. Then I will show you how to increase the font size of the editor. So let's click on window, then preferences. Then let's expand general, then appearance and let's select colors and fonts. Then let's expand basic. And let's select text font, then edit. And here we can increase the font size. So let's select this value, for example, then OK then apply and close so here we can see that the font size increased now let's save the different files let's stop the application and let's run it again let's go to the browser and let's refresh the page and here we have the data that we passed from the controller to the page